Hi, my name is Quincy Gao, and this is a video about my upbringing in the small, rural, midwestern town of Diamonddale, Michigan. Incorporated 1906, this sign is right in front of our house at 547 East Washington. The street that is the way in or out of town. When I lived here, we had a wonderful view overlooking miles of cornfields. Now it's a subdivision. The head of my household is Aileen Gao, an old hippie that you'd expect to have vanity plate such as this. My mother has filled our two acre yard with all these little trinkets to personalize the feel of the yard. Some of these things even have a practical use. My mother is a Scottish immigrant who has this sign over our front door reading in Scottish Gaelic. The other members of our family include George this cat seen in his usual spot underneath the sheets. Our dogs, Tribe, Murphy, Amber, and Sparky. Also myself, in this picture I like of myself. And Patty, my mom's partner for the last 16 years. Okay. First time I saw Patty Whitty was at a conference for work. Yeah, I met Patty many years ago, gosh, when I was still in Ann Arbor, professionally. And I kind of suspected that she might be a lesbian. Um, and then we ran into each other at the Women's Music Festival. And I was like, hmm, okay. And then we ended up working on a project together in our um, respective places of employment and got to know each other then. At the time, she was, um, she, was already, she was in a relationship, but it seemed like that relationship wasn't going real well. And then well, what happened? And then when I moved up here, you know, we spent more time together. And I could tell she was kind of hitting on me. And um, eventually she did end that relationship and we ended up getting together. There are a lot of families out there with a set of very similar to my own, having two parents of the same sex. Each family unit deals with it in their own individual way. My family dealt with it with silence. I never told anyone until after I graduated from high school that my mom was gay. I don't know if I so much kept it a secret as that I didn't think it was anybody's business like anything else, you know, that you don't go like running around going, hey, my parents didn't get married or it, it's just like I didn't think it was anybody's business. On one hand, I wanted to be able to have the relationship with your mom that I had, but on the other hand, I didn't want you to feel um, embarrassed or you know, especially going to more of a conservative high school. Um, didn't want you to be uh, embarrassed and feel ostracized because of our relationship. Of course, we wanted to live together, and um, besides the fact that it felt like the right thing to do, and one of, you know, one of the biggest things we were definitely concerned about was how you were going to react, and it was hard for you, I think, at first, because you... I think, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I know at the time your reaction was, how do I explain to my friends, you know, who's, who's bedroom suit? And so I think it affected your confidence level as when you were younger. 
I don't know if you were real, real social anyway uh, for the first few years you were in high school. You were still trying to find people that you connected with. I think you took, you took a lot of bullying as it was. And, you know, basically probably suggested, you know, when you feel comfortable with people. Because, unfortunately, I was beginning to see that you could get burned. I, I often wonder if that's why you weren't comfortable bringing over friends a lot or just because our house wasn't as big as your friends or it's because of where we lived remotely as far as at that time there wasn't a lot of kids around here your age. and if Other kids that I didn't really know as well uh, would come over, I'd feel a little more uptight about them being over and how they were going to accept us if they knew, if they... Um, if they would judge you, if they would judge us for the relationship. So I think I probably would have been, if everything was equal, I would have probably been more accepting of people coming into the house. You know, you know some kids just don't understand all types of lifestyles or can be prejudiced for no reason. And, you know, that happens wherever, no matter how progressive the community appears to be, there are prejudices, and it's just because people don't understand. This is true. They don't understand. But do people within these families understand? Since non-blood relations are usually defined by a wedding that happens between members of two separate families, then how do you define those relationships when society hasn't given them a name? I asked Patty how she defined our relationship. More than a roommate, but not a parent. Um, a friend. Patty um, has been a huge support to me, certainly. Can't say a stepmother. Um, just somebody who's really close to you and somewhat of a mentor. We all were living together as you were turning to, to your teenage years and um, accepting another disciplinary figure in your life was not, you know, eh, 